Hey guys, welcome back to another video. My name is Val if you are new to my channel and if you are a subscriber, hugs and kisses to you guys. I love you guys. Thank you so much for your loyalty and support. So today's video is going to be on the 10 things that I don't do to my relaxed hair. I know it's very typical for us to share what we do do to our hair in our regimen, in our routine, in our hair journey, but it's actually nice to see how we kind of set ourselves apart from the crowd by sharing what we don't do. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so number one on my list of 10 things that I don't do to my relaxed hair is I don't do long-term protective styles, you guys. I don't, I get this question a lot, you know, do you do weaves, do you do braids? And I don't do any of those. So prior to my relaxed hair journey, I used to do weaves and box braids, but I didn't really see much of an improvement in my hair. If anything, I saw more of a setback, <laughs> to be honest. But then again, I didn't really take care of my hair, so there's that. I just saw more thinning, more breakage, and my hair was just really uneven as a result. So I made a decision early on in my hair journey. I'm not going to incorporate any long-term protective styles um, If anything, I did wear wigs. I wore a lot of lace front wigs during the time of 2007 to 2009 and I was able to achieve my goal as a result of that So that is something that I may want to start incorporating back into my regimen just to kind of give my hair a break sometimes So as the cool weather approaches, I'm thinking of trying headband wigs or even lace fronts who knows I just can't do the box braids and the weaves like it's just nah <laughs> but I love doing um, protective styles like high buns low buns those really help me to retain length and retain moisture in my hair but no to long-term protective styles okay so number two I don't do hot oil treatments in my hair like as a standalone treatment I don't do them. I love to incorporate oils like carrier oils into my regimen. So I love to use my avocado oil, my coconut oil, olive oil, but I like to incorporate them into my deep conditioners. That way it kind of, it's like a two in one combo. So I'm deep conditioning and I'm doing my hot oil treatment all in one as opposed to separate. I'm not really in and out the shower constantly. It just saves time in my opinion and it just works for my hair. So that's me, no hot oil treatment. So number three on the list is I don't use Use box relaxers you guys I don't use no lie in my hair I only use lie relaxers specifically I use the ORS olive oil normal strength relaxer and I've been using it for a good 10 years plus when I first got my relaxer back in like grade 6 grade 7 I went to the salon and all they had was live relaxers so I kind of just kept that trend going as I took over my hair and started my whole hair journey and doing my relaxers at home so um, that's that it's not to say that I have a preference really it's just basically all I know and a lot of people ask me you know do you prefer lie relaxers versus no lie I mean there's pros and cons with both but honestly all I know is lie so I'm just gonna stick to it. It works for me and my hair responds to it well. Lye relaxers tend to be a little bit more harsher on the scalp, but it's definitely more gentle on the hair. Whereas no lie is kind of the opposite. So you just pick your preference. All right, so number four on the list is I don't shampoo or rinse my hair over the sink. So I don't hold my head over the sink or over the bathtub to rinse out my shampoo or to rinse out my deep conditioner. So I used to do this back in the day when my hair was about shoulder length or so. Um, and it was easier, I won't lie, uh, <laughs> to avoid going in and out the shower. It was amazing. But as my hair got longer and just flipping it over and then flipping it back, and then detangling it out it was just a lot of manipulation and I lost a lot of hair that way so for me going in the shower was much easier just being able to rinse my hair in the direction that it actually grows was just much better less manipulation and um, it just made more sense overall so only the shower for me no over the sink all right so number five is stretching long so I don't stretch my relaxers long you guys so I like to do 10 to 12 weeks that's perfect for my hair I don't really experience any breakage or shedding during those times so I just know okay you know what my hair is telling me this time frame works I remember when I went to 14 or 15 weeks post relaxer and you guys it was horrible it was horrible I said never again I listen to my hair and I stick to what works 10 to 12 weeks is perfect I mean it's much better than how I used to relax which was every six weeks or so which was crazy you shouldn't be doing that. For me, 10 to 12 weeks gives me enough new growth so I don't overlap or over process my hair. So it just works in that sense. Kudos to you ladies who stretch 20 plus weeks. You guys are amazing. <laughs> Not for me. I don't shampoo 
condition and then deep condition. I get this question quite a bit. I see comments, you know, Val, do you condition before you deep condition? Or do you condition after you shampoo? And I'm like, what? That routine doesn't really make sense to me, to be honest. I'd rather just cut the middleman out and go straight for the good stuff. So I shampoo, then deep condition. I don't do that mid-step conditioner in between. I don't really see the point. Plus, my shampoos are very hydrating. Like, it feels like I've conditioned my hair. So it doesn't really make sense to do the condition before the deep condition, if that makes sense. So yeah, I just go straight from shampoo to deep condition. No middleman, I go straight for the good stuff. So number seven on the list is double heat. So what I mean is I don't blow dry and then flat iron. Like that's just excessive heat. I don't see the point. And I typically only use heat after I relax. So I don't use heat. Like if I'm stretching my relaxer like I am right now, I'm about maybe 12 weeks post relaxer. So I don't typically use heat at this stage because I'm about to relax. So when I do use heat, which is after a relaxer, my hair is fresh. I don't really need to use both heat combinations. I would rather just pick one or the other. Lately, I've been doing just flat ironing. So I'll air dry and then I flat iron, but I kind of want to switch it up and see what blow drying would feel like. So I may just opt for blow drying only, but I won't blow dry and then flat iron. It's just a lot, it's a lot of manipulation. It's a lot of stress on your hair and you don't want that. So my thing is I don't use double heat. I pick one heat and go with it. So I don't comb my hair in the shower while it's wet or while the water is running through my hair. I tried this very early on in my hair journey and it just didn't feel right. Like my hair felt snagged on, my hair felt just stressed in a way. It's really hard to explain, but I stopped doing it and you know what, my hair has still thrived. I like to detangle when my hair is somewhat damp. When your hair is wet, you guys, it's in the most fragile state and you know, running your comb through it while it's wet and in the shower, it could lead to unnecessary breakage and I don't even wanna experience that again and I did never again for me I like to comb my hair when it's somewhat damp it's not too wet and it's not excessively dry that way it has a little bit more strength in it and it can tolerate that comb going through it but if anything I like to finger comb in the shower that way I can feel any knots or tangles and separate it with my fingers but no to combing in the shower I just don't do it all right so I don't touch my hair you guys one week prior to relaxer day like I just don't do it my hair my comb my fingers everything is on vacation we don't touch the scalp we don't touch the hair we leave it alone this is the best way for me to avoid any scalp burns I just leave my hair alone so I typically relax like on a Friday or a Saturday so the Sunday before is usually when I do my relaxer prep so I'll clarify I do my shampoo then I'll do my protein moisture DC and then I'll air dry. After that, I'll do like a loose braid or a low bun, something of a sort, but I'm not really putting any tension on my scalp. And I leave it alone, you guys. Like I probably just moisturize throughout the week, very lightly. I don't manipulate my scalp. I don't do any kind of exercising or heavy activity because that sweat can open up your pores and that could really cause burning. So I leave it alone and the day before relaxer, I'll base my scalp, that is it. So I don't touch my hair one week prior to relaxer. It's just a no brainer. We don't do it. So next on the list is I don't comb my hair often, you guys, like at all. I don't pick up my wide tooth comb on a daily basis combing through my hair. I just don't do it. I typically save full detangling for wash days and that's usually twice a week. But other than that, I use my fingers, you guys. Like my fingers have become combs and I just use it. I'm able to feel through my hair. I can go through my new growth. I can go through any knots and tangles and I can style my hair pretty well with just my hands. Like I can smooth it obviously with a brush and I'll probably lightly rake it with my wide tooth comb, but that is it. I don't go in with a comb every single day because that is equivalent to like giving your hair a mini haircut if you do it constantly. So try not to be in your hair all the time. Low manipulation is key and that's what's helped my hair thrive over the years and as a result it has gotten thicker just not being in my hair constantly. As a bonus I did say 10 things but I do have two more. So I always get this question a lot, do you color your hair? <laughs> I don't color my hair, you guys. My hair is a dark brown. It's not black, but it's a dark brown, I would say. When I first started my hair journey, it was more of a brownish color, and I equate that to just high porosity, over-processed hair. And as time went on, my hair got obviously healthier, it got darker, it has more shine. So I don't color my hair, but I think I may have to because I'm seeing some gray hairs and my husband keeps pointing it out and it's annoying, but it's more so in my hair, like around my crown. So it's not like 
in the front where you can really really see it but he has some gray hair too so we're kind of graying together <laughs> in that sense we're growing old together but um yeah i'm in my 30s and gray hair is popping up i don't self trim i get this question a lot you know can you do a video on self trimming how do you trim your hair how do you trim split ends and i don't do it you guys i leave that strictly to my stylist i tried it back in the day and honestly i just didn't trim off enough and my hair looked horrible my ends were really thin let's just be honest i don't trust myself to trim off enough. I do own a pair of shears, so if I do see any single strand knots or any split ends, I'll snip that off. I'll do like a search and destroy every now and then, but the girl is not trimming her hair at home. Nope. I'll go to my stylist and then he does it nice and even and I'm happy. Yeah guys, that is basically it. This was really fun and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was really fun sharing what I don't really incorporate into my regimen. It makes it a little bit more unique and more personal in that sense. You guys comment down below. Let me know what you don't do or don't use in your regimen. I'd love to see it. If you decide to do a video, be sure to tag me. Let me know. Message me somehow here or Instagram. I'd love to see it and support you. Of course, if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to give me a thumbs up, comment down below, subscribe if you haven't, and I'll see you guys in the next video.